in episode four of our gun part painting series. I'm actually going to prep and uh, paint a firearm part, which would be this A2 uh, style pistol grip. Um, what I've done uh, off camera um, is uh, I masked off the inside part of this grip. Um, this part normally always fits very tight on the lower receiver. So what I don't want to do is add uh, paint into an area that isn't going to be seen that probably will just be gouged up or scraped off when I go to install it. And the added thickness of the paint, although it's not much, it could, it could definitely make uh, installation a little bit more problematic. So I don't, um, these types of areas where we've got parts coming together or rubbing against each other or they're extremely tight, and especially if they're out of sight, um, I, I don't normally paint them. So that's why I have the uh, inside uh, masked off. And what I've also done is uh, I've taken um, a little stick here and I've wrapped it with uh, masking tape so I can insert it. I'm gonna use a little hole on the end right here. And that's gonna be how I hold this for doing the uh, uh, painting and such. Okay, with, uh, with this uh, tape uh, stick, um, that I have uh, wrapped up. Um, this could be anything from a pencil to a pen or, or anything you have laying around that's, that's firm that you can uh, hold uh, your piece. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're, uh, I'm going to spray this down with uh, wax and grease remover. And how I'm basically going to do this is I'm going to spray over this bucket right here and uh, I'm just going to spray it and let it drip off and then let it air dry. So I'm going to show you the, the spraying procedure but I'm going to stop the camera after that uh, because some of these procedures get uh, a little bit too long and boring. And I also should mention that uh, if my voice starts to sound muffled, um, that's because I'm going to be wearing the full face respirator, so bear with me on that. All right, I have my uh, portable paint booth. I've got that running, um, so it will um, provide some suction to um, uh, take out the, the fumes from this wax and grease remover and that's what my voice sounds like with a full respirator on All right, after, uh, 
after applying a, a liberal amount of the wax and grease remover uh, on all the surfaces I just spray it until I get it running and let it drip and I'm gonna let this uh, air dry before we move on to the next step so this is gonna take a few minutes and I'll be back okay I let this uh, uh, drip for just a little bit and um, the final process is using a lint-free clean rag something that you uh, haven't used for silicone or anything like that I mean a completely virgin clean lint-free rag um, you definitely want to wipe your item down get off uh, any of the residual um, wax and grease remover and of course before I uh, move on to the next step um, I have my compressed can of air again just in case this particular lint free rag that I have isn't quite so lint free um, I normally will um, I'll buy um, some high quality uh, lint free rags at the auto body shop and I use them only for these types of purposes I don't use them for cleanup or for putting tire protectant on or anything like that anything that can contaminate those I keep them strictly for for purposes like this and you know sometimes you can even well what I do sometimes with these is I'll, I'll mark on them with a, a, a sharpie I'll mark on them what they're used for that way I can keep track you know I've got may sound funny but I've got specific rags for cleaning glass I've got uh, rags for waxing removing wax um, all pretty much microfiber and I've got some rags for you know cleaning wheels I've got rags for doing tires and doing silicone protectant and I I keep them all labeled so you know one thing I don't want to do is grab a rag that I use for with armor all or, or any type of tire protectant and put it on something else so uh, it's just a way for me to identify rags when I'm doing car detailing or if I'm doing stuff like this so and you end up with, uh, um, you know, with, well, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I've got several bags of, uh, of several large bags filled with towels. So anyway, um, I'm going to finish this, and um, we'll be back for the next stage. All right, next up, we're going to be applying the adhesion promoter. Um, surface is um, prepped and ready to go. I'm going to put the respirator on, so excuse the muffled sound. I'll try not to talk while I have it on. Uh, I'm going to be putting on uh, light coats. I'm going to do two light coats. And before I can apply paint, I'm going to have to wait about 20 minutes. That's the first coat, and I'm going to have to wait about three to five minutes before I can put on another. Okay, I'm ready to put on a uh, second uh, coat of adhesion promoter. Uh, one thing I didn't mention um, is when you're applying, whether whether it's adhesion promoter or paint or, or clear coat, anything like that, you want to keep the can uh, probably six to eight inches away from your item. I'm actually shooting a little bit closer because I'm, I'm trying to keep everything in frame of the camera so um, you don't want to get right on top of something like this 
and you want to keep it a little bit more back like so six six to eight inches um, because if, if you're not careful um, you can end up with uh, sags or runs and um, you know that definitely can be problematic and does not uh, contribute to a, a nice professional looking uh, finish so I'm ready to put um, a second coat of adhesion promoter on All right, so um, I've got a, about 20 minutes uh, before I can uh, get to doing the paint. All right, it's been about 20 minutes, so the adhesion promoter has had time to um, properly dry before I apply the paint. Uh, I'm gonna reiterate again that the adhesion promoter, uh, to me, in my opinion, it's, it's optional when you're shooting or painting a plastic item and using the uh, Krylon Fusion for example. It's, it's much more important if you're shooting other materials like metal or wood that you use the adhesion promoter. Uh, I've painted parts like this with adhesion promoter and without adhesion promoter. Um, they both work great. Uh, I think adhesion promoter is going that extra step to uh, make sure you get yourself a good solid durable uh, finish. Um, also I got tired of holding on to this waiting for it to dry so this little stand here with the alligator clips is something I use for soldering circuit boards and wiring and I just uh, I took that off my bench and, and brought it over here to, to uh, hold this and I'm holding it inside of the paint booth so the uh, paint booth, uh, the fan can um, deal with, with any fumes being put off by that. And moving on to the next step, um, I'm going to be using the uh, Krylon uh, Fusion, the camouflage version, and that version is ultra flat, which will work out great for a multicam scheme. You should shake this can vigorously for two minutes. Get the, get the little ball bearing that's inside, or the marble, whatever's inside going. You can hear it. And I'm going to be applying four to five coats. And I'm going to be doing each coat very lightly, six to eight inches from the object. And I'm going to be waiting 30, 45 seconds uh, be between each coat. Uh, because you, you, this, this part's very important. You, you've got to be very careful that you do not put the paint on too heavy. Uh, you don't want it to run and you don't want it to sag. Uh, Krylon is very good paint that you normally don't have those types of problems unless you're putting the coat on too heavy or it's too close. So if you follow the directions on the can, um, you definitely can't go wrong with this. going to uh, put the respirator back on so if my voice becomes muffled you know why Just to be on the safe side, any dust or anything that, that might be on this. Shouldn't be any, but you never know.
Okay, I'm going to be waiting about uh, 30, 45 seconds before the next coat. Now, um, painting all the way down inside of this uh, can be somewhat challenging because you can't really you can't really get the nozzle up this close. You're going to end up with a run or a sag. So the most I can do is shoot from a distance and try and aim the nozzle to get as much of that as possible inside. And I'm using short little bursts. And even doing that, I'm getting too heavy of a coat on the end of this. You got to be really careful doing something like this because it's real easy to end up with a run. The, the Krylon dries pretty fast, so um, you know, 30, 45 seconds and you're ready for another coat. And I can try another couple of squirts. I gotta be real careful though. I can do like one squirt on one end and then I gotta wait 30 seconds or so, 20 seconds and try and get another squirt. Uh, it's just, um, if you really want the inside of something like this painted, you would probably be better, better off masking this entire outside first and painting the inside, letting it dry, and then removing your masking tape and then continue to paint the outside. I'm not so concerned with the inside. I'm going to get it a little bit, but uh, that's going to be it. Okay, I got all four corners on the inside uh, going in about inch, inch and a half. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to continue doing the uh, coats on the outside of the uh, uh, grip. Alright, that's my uh, second coat. It's going on perfect like always. And you can normally tell when it flashes out. Um, it goes from a wet look to a, a semi-dry look, and that's a, that's a good indicator that you're you're ready to put on another light coat. Uh, again, it's 30 to 45 seconds, give or take. Depends on the temperature. Hotter environments, it'll dry faster. Colder environments, it'll take a bit longer. So, just adjust your spraying time based on your your the temperature of your painting environment. Just trying to get a little bit more on the uh, inside of the grip opening. And I'm uh, ready for my third coat now. And I think I'm going to do one more coat and I'm going to call it good on this. Also got pretty good coverage on the uh, inside of the opening there from what I can tell. And 
and it looks like I'm ready for my fourth and final coat. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and we'll be back to take a look at the finished product. Okay, after waiting about an hour, um, this is um, pretty much dry. You can actually, you could handle this after about 15 minutes, but um, it's fairly dry after an hour. And the next stage is the application of the Krylon Fusion Clear Coat. Now the Clear Coat has to be, or should be, sprayed within four hours of you painting your item. So I give the Fusion paint an hour to dry and that varies depending upon the temperature of your environment and then I'm going to uh, do the clear coat and that's what we're uh, that's what we're going to do next we're going to do about four coats of clear and then I'm going to let it dry overnight and we'll be done okay um, for the clear coat we're using matching Krylon Fusion Clear. It is a, uh, uh, it's not a satin, it's not a gloss, it's just a clear and it has a UV protector in it. And uh, whenever you're using Fusion, you want to match up your Fusion paint with the appropriate Fusion Clear Coat. You don't want to mix and match the different styles uh, because Krylon makes a lot of different product um, and they all have matching clear coats to go with uh, that individual product. Same technique for uh, applying the clear coat. Uh, we're going to do light coats and uh, give it, uh, you know, 30, 45 seconds, give or take, uh, to flash in between each coat. So there's the first coat. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the, the, uh, the recording and I'll be back when uh, I'm, I'm down to the last coat. All right, we're uh, getting down to our last coat. Uh, I'm uh, down, this is going to be the fourth coat. So there'll be a total of four coats of paint and four coats of clear. Okay, that's going to do it for um, the clear coat, and I'm going to set this up, and I'm going to let it cure for uh, 24 hours, and then we'll take a look at the finished clear coated product. All right, after letting the uh, pistol grip cure overnight, it's uh, ready to handle, and you can see... Um, I want to um, 
note right away that the Krylon Fusion Clear is not uh, a flat or a matte type of clear. It's probably more like a satin. It's not gloss, but it's below one or two steps below gloss. So you want to keep that in mind. If you're using, like I use the um, extra flat uh, Krylon Fusion Camouflage, and that's very flat, adding the clear on top of it would make it glossier. So it's something to keep in mind depending upon what you're doing. If you're doing a, you know, a non-reflective camouflage scheme, you're, you're probably not going to want to use the uh, um, Krylon Fusion Clear. Uh, it just depends on what you're going for. If you're, if you're painting something and just basically changing the color and you don't mind a little bit of a sheen to it, then obviously the clear coat is, is definitely suitable. And I, it's, it's hard to say if you can pick up the uh, sheen, um, but it's, it's definitely reflecting some of my lights here. Um, and I've already removed the uh, masking tape around the inside there. I left that, um, you know, black so I can uh, fit, it to the, fit it to the lower, which uh, I'll do right now so you can see what this looks like on a black lower. And the finished Krylon Fusion pistol grip on a black lower. So, to summarize, if you want an, uh, if you're using a flat paint, Krylon Fusion flat paint, paint or uh, a extra flat, and you want the flat look, don't use the Krylon Fusion clear. If you don't mind kind of a satin sheen to it, uh, use the Krylon Fusion clear. Now this applies to the Krylon Fusion. If you're using the Color Master Krylon, um, they have a flat, a satin, and a gloss clear available for that type of paint. So those are some options for you. And I always recommend uh, if you're going to paint something, and you get the supplies, and you get your paint, you get your clear. If you're going to paint a, a plastic pistol grip like this, get some other plastic item uh, to, to test paint. You know, get a get a, a something that's plastic that's somewhat similar, um, and go through the procedure: the wax and grease remover, the adhesion promoter, um, the paint, and then apply the clear. So experiment first before you take a twenty or a thirty dollar uh, grip or or whatever you happen to be painting, and and you don't want to learn on that. Learn on, you know, even learn on the the cap that the that comes on the can learn on something else in practice you're keeping the distance and the light uh, even um, application of the paint uh, the light application coats of the paint uh, just to make sure that you understand you know how far away from it you need to be or how close you can be uh, practice on a few items first it doesn't take a whole lot of paint to to practice before you you know go in and in, in, uh, do it on a, on a more expensive item. So that's going to wrap up um, episode four uh, of this um, How to Paint Firearm Parts series. Uh, there should be enough information here to get you started. Um, again, it this doesn't cover all possible scenarios. You know, if you've got an airbrush set up at home with, you know, nice airbrush airbrushes, or if you've got a you know, big compressor and you've got larger paint guns, that's a whole nother topic. And that, you know, definitely is, is, is great. Um, you know, if, if you have those types of tools and you want to utilize them and, you know, go down to an automotive paint supply store and, and, you know, get some paints mixed up and get the hardeners and, uh, and go that route. Uh, that's just beyond the scope of, of what I can cover here in these, in these videos. So, I know a lot of people out there don't have those types of uh, equipment or the facilities to, to work with that type of equipment. So this is more of a basic do-it-yourself uh, uh, type of a painting routine that you can do in, in pretty much any environment with a, a minimal investment.